So I'd like to introduce our second speaker. It's Ian Schofield from Iceland Foods. Um, Iceland made the headlines this year by becoming the first uh, major retailer to pledge to eliminate plastics entirely from their own brand products. Thank you. Right, I'm going to give you a very quick uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes talk about removal of plastics. Um, I'm first going to show you, on the 16th of January this year, we announced we were going to go plastic free. And there was no Brexit news that day. There was no Donald Trump news that day. There was just plastic free news that day. And we caught the headlines in a big, big way. It is estimated more than 12 million tonnes of plastic enters the world's oceans every year, putting the lives of all forms of marine life at risk. Toxins released when plastics break down in the ocean are then re-entering the food chain via seafood. Plastic also creates a significant recycling issue, as only around a third of plastics are recycled in the UK, and the remainder either ends up in landfill or is discarded illegally. This situation is now unsustainable, and it's the responsibility of everyone, including retailers, to make a difference. Iceland is aiming to become the world's first mainstream retailer to fully eliminate plastic packaging from our own label products, which covers more than a thousand product lines by 2023. It's an issue that we care deeply about, and the results of our consumer research is clear. UK consumers believe supermarkets need to make changes in the way they package food and the materials used. The technologies and materials for producing a diverse range of non-plastic packaging are now becoming commercially available. We're in the process of producing our new February ranges. Within the ranges, we're now going to be using a new paper-based tray. We have a real opportunity here to make a huge difference to the environment. It's a pledge that we're determined to deliver on. The onus is on retailers as a leading contributor to plastic packaging pollution to take a stand and deliver real and long-lasting change. There really is no excuse anymore for excessive packaging that creates needless waste and damages our environment. And we're working closely with our supportive own brand suppliers to ensure that this pledge becomes a reality. So a very powerful statement only two days after our government had said we're going to reduce plastics by 2042. I be dead, my children are going to inherit this world and we've got to do something and do it quickly. And as a retailer, we talk to our customers every day so we have an opportunity. And for those who don't know Iceland, we have a thousand stores in the UK and we sell in 41 countries of the world. So we have a big responsibility. Some of the newspapers used language like war on plastics. We never used the word war on plastics. We used we've got to turn the tap down on plastics. And having just listened to quite a bit about PET and where PET is going, there's an evolution happening on plastics now, um, including, like me, getting rid of them. And I mean all of them in five years' time. Well, actually, four years and two months now. So I've got a hell of a job on my hands across all our products. But it went national. It went into every newspaper. It was even mentioned in the government that day. We, little old Iceland, we're only 2.5% of the food market, was mentioned in the British government that day. It made a huge impact. There was 4 billion chances of seeing the impact of this, 4 billion on social networks that day. When I walked into the BBC that morning for my interview, the lady on reception said to me, in a very clear voice, thank God someone's doing something about plastics. Even the lady who was putting my makeup on before I went on TV, yes, I did need makeup, uh, they all said to me, uh, blimey, thank God someone's doing something. We started something and I thank God everybody has carried it on. And the interesting thing was, 40 years ago when I trained in the co-op, one of our retailers in the, in the UK and obviously here in Scandinavia, we had a hundred manufacturing factories. And guess what I was doing? I was learning polymers. And guess what I was doing? I was taking all the cellulose and the glassines and all the natural materials and putting them into plastics 40 years ago. 
Guess what I'm doing today? Taking them out. True circular economy, 40 years later. Yeah, unbelievable. Now for a retailer, we have a lot of conflicts, a lot of conflicts. You can imagine the back of our stores, the distribution. If you didn't know, our shrink wrap at the back that goes on all our pallets that we ship all around the world, and we literally do buy from all around the world, this shrink wrap is now being collected. It's having to go to Germany at the moment, but it's being recycled back into our carrier bags. Now, is that good use of plastics? You may argue it is. Well, it is because we're recycling it, but it's not truly the answer. And we've got to look at all the conflicts we've got across all our store, across our vehicles, across the type of company cars we're using, everything. And one of the things I like to say is recycle materials are not considered a differentiator. They're not. They're absolutely not. Everybody wants sustainability, but you've got to explain in very, very simple terms to your customers, the people who come in our stores every day, what it's all about. But you know what? They won't forgive us. They won't forgive us. Our customers will not forgive us if we don't do something. They absolutely will not. And they'll vote with their feet. And guess what also I'm doing? We're going through every buyer in the business. So I'm sat with every buyer, because I have to launch every single product in the business. I'm in charge of the own label process, as well as packaging. So as soon as the buyer has a product now, so ice cream in two years' time will have no plastics in it. You think of all ice cream at the moment, it's got plastic everywhere. In two years' time, there'll be none. On things like ready meals, where we've already got the tr rid of the trays, there'll be no plastic on those trays. At the moment, there's polyester on those trays. They can actually be recycled, but it's not good enough for us. We're going to remove the polyester on the inside of those trays. It goes on and it goes on. It goes on through food sourcing, all our packaging, secondary packaging, tertiary packaging, everything we're doing, including wastage. And we're not talking about food waste today, because food waste is really important in this too. Because we as retailers, we've always wanted long shelf life. We've driven long shelf life. Why? because we don't want any shrinkage, wastage in our stores. So we pass that to the consumer. The consumer gets the benefit of having all that long shelf life. But you know what? We've got huge food waste around the world. 57% of food going to homes is being wasted in the home. That cannot be acceptable. So we're also looking at, do we need to have less shelf life on our items when we change our packaging? Because the other thing is we're not going to compromise is food safety. We are never going to compromise food safety. But what we can do is use technology to help us make better decisions. And most of you have seen the apps these days you've got on your phone where you can go to your fridge and it will tell you what your shelf lives are on some products. It's coming and it's coming quick. It will also reorder it for you. So the technology is moving so quickly where packaging is going to play a massive role in this, a huge role in ensuring you know what the material is it's made of, you know what's in the product, and you know what shelf life it is. You watch out for the next range of technology coming on food packaging. It's immense. So, I have 16,000 tons to get rid of. I've already got rid of 4,000 tons in the last eight months, and I'm going like a steam train. There are some difficulties. Film is a big problem for me. Polyethylene film, used for frozen food in particular, shipped all around the world, is a very low cost. It doesn't have barrier, but it does a very low cost way of carrying products to you, the consumer. Getting rid of polythene is an issue for me. I haven't found it yet. But guess what? I've got 160 tests on the go of different materials. I am determined to get rid of fossil fuel. Determined. And the good thing is, I'm not doing this on my own. I've got a lot of universities I'm working with. I've got a lot of new people and new customers, new packaging suppliers who we've never dealt with before, who've come forward with great ideas. Ian, have you heard about this? Ian, what about this? And guess what? We're going to make some mistakes. When you are a disruptor, like we are in this particular area, we are going to make mistakes. But you know what? We'll recover quickly, because we can and will. So are you getting the message of how determined we are on this? These are my biggest, biggest issues, because these are the biggest tonnage. Amazingly, milk is on the top. 
Milk is on the top because polyethylene, particularly in the UK, has been used as a very low cost, low weight item away from glass. And if I get rid of all my milk, that gets rid of a huge part of my tonnage. So guess what? I've got next year a lot of tests. I'm already on with it, but I've got lots of tests at the moment looking for materials where we're not using plastic for milk. Now, funny enough, in Scandinavia, there's a lot of board here. And when you walk around, there's quite a bit of board already. But there's also some plastic coating still on those boards, isn't there? We've got to get rid of that too. Yeah, we still need barrier. Yes, we still need uh, to make sure we're keeping our food safe. But there's no reason why we can't get rid of it. And why are we doing this? Let's remember why we're doing this. You've seen the videos. You've seen what drove us to make changes. If you go anywhere these days, on any beach, anywhere around the world, you see plastic everywhere. People were saying to me, it's only Asia. So I went out on fishing boats. And I was absolutely staggered how much plastic we dragged up out of the ocean. Staggered. So we're eating that plastic, that microplastic, today. We are eating it, whether we like it or not. There's a magnificent film made called The Midway, um, which is near Hawaii. And if you've seen the video, it shows all the birds dying from eating nothing but plastics. What are we doing? And when I go around my coast of the UK and I go in those boats and everyone's saying, well, it's only Asia, it's the Yangtze River, it's all these others, and we're picking plastic out of the sea at all moments, that's a very, very sobering thought for our future. A very sobering. And I've got a 19-year-old, sorry, 20-year-old son now who's in New York studying. And when I go around New York and I look at the rubbish, where is that rubbish going? It's going elsewhere out of their country. That cannot be right. So we are small. We're a tiny retailer doing our thing. All the messages from me to you today, and this is where I'm going to leave it, is we have to rethink the way we are packaging our products and our food. We have to think very differently. Because it's not our world, it's our kids. And the interesting for me is, when I did geology at school, I remember, I remember very clearly, and when Tim just touched it there, he, the geology teacher said to me, the human race is only the next layer of soil. But you know what? We've now got a layer of soil called plastic. It's already there. It's not going anywhere. Why? Because it's not, it can't go anywhere. So frightening though it is, we have got to change that. And it's great. The word bioplastics drives me crazy because I've had the pile of bioplastics that I've seen. Some are great. They really work. Some don't. And if they break into microplastics, they are no use. We don't want any microplastics in our environment. We've got to avoid that. So that's why we're driving it so heavily and so strongly. So that's what I want to leave you for. And at the end, I really want some difficult questions, some really difficult questions on what you're doing and why you're doing it and what do you think about this because that's the most important thing for me. We're learning every day on this trail. It's a journey. It's an absolute journey. Thanks very much.